My pronouns would be flat, stationary, non-rotational. No, not not this week. Every week I turn up to this channel and I, I have to put up with people saying stupid things. And I, I am just not doing it this week. No, you see, I, I recently came back from a lovely trip to Germany. Here's me in Cologne filming the cathedral. It was absolutely fantastic and it's inspired me. I want to learn more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit today and watch some documentaries about churches. I, I was inspired by their beauty and there will be nothing stupid said at all. Let's go. This isn't a church, it's a piece of technology. And let me show you what they do to these buildings to turn them off. <sighs> Don't ruin this for me. I'm pregnant. Shut up, Kent. Now... I'll give this guy one more chance. I just want a normal documentary about churches. Okay, let's try again. Look at this cable. Goes all the way up the building to the spire. Because if they didn't do this, if they didn't put this grounding rod in, this building would still be turned on. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by telling you why churches have these uh, grounding rods. I'm, I'm simply not going to do it. I know you're not that stupid. Um... God, I miss my time in Germany. Yeah, it's German. Yes, yes, it is, Kent. It takes me right back there. Anyway, seeing as I obviously cannot escape the num nuttery, let's lean right into it and hear what this guy's got to say about churches. This glass would have been added at a later date, so this would have been empty. So this whole building would have been a resonator, a free energy device. And as I said, all this glass was added at a later date, and this was to pay homage to the creator. It's great, isn't it, when you can just make things up and put it on the internet with no evidence whatsoever. I love it. Or maybe, maybe he has got a source of information for for what he's saying. Maybe, uh, maybe he he read it in the Bible. In fact, maybe he read it in the same Bible that this guy reads. People, we are going to win this. It says in the scripture, we'll smash it. We'll smash these Satanist cults down the whole to hell. You know what? He's not wrong. Uh, I've got it here. It says, and Jesus took the loaves and fishes and offered a prayer. And said, we'll smash it. <clears throat> we'll smash these Satanist cults down the road to hell. So they're in black and white. Amen. Frequency, cymatics and sound. People could be enjoying this building, feeling the energy that this building emits, but instead it's here, it's boarded up, it's locked and it's going to waste. It's switched off. So here's what we need to do. We need to get these buildings turned back on. Well, thank you for that informative piece. And uh, I'm sure he's the only person on the internet saying things like this about churches. I'm sure that nobody else on the internet thinks churches are some kind of resonator that provides the world with free energy. Nobody at all. Now, I just wanted to point out the St. Mary of Charity Church, this huge, beautiful stone archway above the large medieval wooden door. Perfect. This is why I came here today, to, to see beautiful craftsmanship and to be inspired by the stories of these amazing buildings. None of this pseudo-scientific misinformation nonsense. I think I'm going to like this guy. The actual spire would act as a, an electrical capacitor that would draw down the atmospheric telluric energy. Oh, fuck off! These would act as electromagnetic channels that would basically draw the electrical energy down. They would come to the ground and inside these stone arches would be metal strips. They were usually made of a, an alloy or a, a pure copper. Uh, metal that would be then literally attached down and they'd be on the inside supporting pillars of the church or the cathedral and these would then be channeled into these electrical capacitors uh, and then the energy from that would be used for heating and lighting okay let's let's try one more here we go but when we look at the cathedrals they're full of organs yeah church church organs now this sounds a bit more up my street and cultural this this definitely can't go wrong. Get these big pipe organs. And, you know, if you've ever seen one of these um, organs, the keyboards, they're massive. Like, literally no one knows how to play them anymore. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say nobody knows how to play them these days, but obviously very, very few people. They were they were magnificent instruments. Let's let's crack on with this one. I think I've found, I think I've found a winner. We had these pipe organs. And, of course, we have things in our body called organs. 
So were these organs good for our organs because they were pumping out frequencies? I just want to pause the video to say this very quickly. If I don't stop a video and ask people to subscribe, then usually nobody subscribes at all. But if I do stop the video and ask people to subscribe, nobody subscribes at all. But I also get complaints about stopping the video and asking people to subscribe. So um, what's the point of this bit then? Just subscribe. And then, of course, we have these big spires on the top of these cathedrals going up into the sky, up into the ether collecting free ether energy, free earth energy. Right, I'll do this bit very quickly. A lot of these ridiculous ideas do kind of have, have their roots in some genuine science. And the genuine science here is obviously as we, as we move up from the ground, uh, the, the potential difference between the earth and the ground increases by about 100 volts per meter, which sounds massive. But the truth is to, to be able to harness that, to power even a single LED, you need to send something up in the atmosphere attached by a long wire to the ground that had the area of a, of a small country. It's not power we can harness. The current that's delivered is far, far, far too small. That is the reality. Action Lab did a great video on it here and uh, I've linked it in the description and the guy managed to harness just enough electricity to give himself a mild electric shock. Ouch, shocked me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's working. <laughs> now that's the reality. The fantasy is you can just take a piece of copper wire, maybe wrap it around a stick and harness unlimited free energy, perhaps even to help your plants grow. Literally, you can just wrap copper around a stick um, with, the, you know, pointing up into the air and put it in your garden and it will draw in and create a field that is good for your plants. And they get results like frost resistance and heat resistance. Uh, they, the plants need less water, they get bigger yields, they're stronger, they're more pest resilient. All these things just from putting a bit of copper in the ground. So again, that, that's a frequency, that's a field that's been created. And the world has no shortage of complete and utter morons that are now wrapping copper around wood, sticking it in their plants and pretending it's helping their plants grow. This is an electroculture tower that I'm working on. Um, it's just starting. I'm going to add a lot more to it. The larger and the more copper and the thicker the gauge of the copper, the more amount of energy you're going to be able to pull down into your soil. Electroculture is a gardening technique that uses atmospheric electricity through copper wire to increase plant growth and yields. And the reason why we need both clockwise and counterclockwise is because we have transverse fields of both the magnetic and dielectric fields that we are trying to harvest with these antennas. And ultimately what they do is bring energy. They bring life force. They bring pure voltage to your plants, to your soil. Well, there's energy in the air and that energy can be conducted by a coil into the soil and affect the microorganisms positively. Anyway, moving on. You know when you look at the top of a church spire and they usually have some kind of like metal cross or ornament or something. And you know how sometimes a light can reflect off it and it just goes bright for a second. And, and when you look at it, you think, oh, the sun is reflecting off it because we understand what reflection is. And then, and then it will be bright and then it will be dark because it's reflecting and then it's not reflecting depending on what, what angle you're at. And we, we totally understand what reflection is. And it's not mysterious in any way, shape or form. It's just, it's just reflection. You know that thing? because not everybody does. What we're seeing here is the top of a temple harnessing what seems to be energy and emitting light. And some mysteries will remain completely unexplained, won't they? Uh, unless you just make up your own explanation without any kind of care for the facts at all. All this architecture that you see is free energy. They're all resonators. They're all like machines. Technology which will be giving free energy to the earth, extracting this free energy from the ether and distributing it around the towns and cities, charging the waters. Nobody would have been sick. Nobody would have been dying prematurely. And the reality would have been something that we can't even imagine. Oh, come on, don't put yourself down. I think you're doing a great job of imagining it all. Um, anyway, where did this nonsense come from? Well, there's many YouTube channels that spread this kind of rubbish, and one of them uh, belongs to perhaps the nicest guy in Flat Earth. I haven't really got a bad word to say about Martin Leaker. I think he's, uh, he's just quite a nice guy with some pretty out there ideas. Welcome back to 
the Martin Dietzka channel. Glad you could be here today, guys, to witness what will be a mind-blowing vlog. And I really don't doubt it, judging by some of the comments in the comment section. Let's take a look at this one. All pieces of matter will have a bubble of disturbed ether around them, and its existence can be verified by the fact that the ether bubble can act as a lens that refocuses any light passing through it. What amazing bullshit. The next time you're in a plane that's flying around noon, watch the plane's shadow in the ground. Yes, because maybe your plane has a glass bottom that will allow you to do that. There will be concentric rings outboard of the center shadow. Ether is creating that effect. What a collection of words that have been put together there. Dirk van Gestel van Gestel says, When there was no gravity, imagine we could free flow insane. Well, Dirk, I'm here to tell you that even though we have gravity, you are right now free flowing insane. Well done. Rachel Stone 632 says, I feel the ether was stolen, not abandoned. A mind bending comment by Olav P4019 After the reset is before the reset. Christ my life says, Martin, is it possible that the statues are actually people turned into stone? Well, obviously fucking not, but let's see what the replies say. Oh, Dean wants x-rays and DNA samples taken from the statues. Guitar Days says, we ourselves are walking batteries, each cell in the body, capable of producing seven-tenths of a watt of electricity. Can you imagine how much power that is? Well, it's seven-tenths of a watt of electricity. It's definitely enough to animate our soul and power the body. The ether is our most vital connection to everything because it is everything. Well, let's have a look at the reply. I read longer her is more receptive to signals. Ah, well, I'm screwed then, aren't I? Before Tataria, the Ethereans were super advanced in the ways of sciences. They could defy the laws of physics as we understand them today. And the devil's in the detail though, isn't it? I, I'm sure there's a lot of things that defy the laws of physics in the way that you understand them today. Yeah. Their architecture, well, that harnessed free energy, you know, the free energy that they don't want you to have. Okay, so basically, a long, long time ago, in a memory far, far away, the, there was this group of people that could wield some kind of magical energy. Now, there is a twist in the tale, as sometimes is, and it is this, that the Ethereans, well, they didn't vanish naturally. They were systematically erased, their technology was confiscated, and their history was completely rewritten. But despite having these uh, abilities to wield this fantastic energy, these uh, these people from a, a long, long time ago in a memory far, far away, they were systematically hunted down and destroyed. What we're talking about here, guys, is the Great Reset before the Great Reset. What, what we're talking about here, guys, is Order 66 that was executed towards the end of the Clone Wars. But there was another even older civilization that had mastered things like anti-gravity. But there was another group of people even older than the Jedi's who'd mastered abilities that the Jedi could only dream of. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Floating cities and other physics-defying things. Floating cities like Lando Calrissian's uh, Cloud City. Ethereum technology. Impossible jointing used some base construction. Yes, I agree. Totally impossible. No human being in history would ever have been able to do this ultra-realistic, highly detailed 3D sculpture of a cat on this wall. You're right, no human being would stack books like this. Okay, well, that wasn't a Star Wars reference, so let's move on. I, I'm considering doing a, a whole video just on this stream of Marty's. Uh, I do like him. He's, he's quite a nice guy. But uh, it's time to reflect upon my performance today. I did promise you a better video last week, and I feel it started off okay. I feel like it maintained its quality 
a little bit longer than last week's. And then I got into the whole Star Wars thing at the end. And I realized uh, halfway through uh, that I had no idea where it was going or why I was doing it. So perhaps I could have uh, I could have improved that. Uh, maybe the, I should have done more comments, uh, read them out in a funny voice, maybe. I, I, you know, I'm trying to live, I'm trying to grow, I'm trying to develop. And, uh, and, and I will do better. But um, if you are still watching at this point, you know, I, I, I'm so sorry that you've got nothing else better to do in your in your lives. Um, but thank you for, for spending the time with me. I've had a good time. I hope you've had a good time. Uh, see you next week.